Welcome. Thank you for coming. Before I start, I just want to make sure. Are any of you aware of this project, Drupal Console? Know where it is? We tried before? You like it? Hate it? Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. We're spending a lot of time on this. A lot of, there are a lot of people helping on this, and it's just pretty awesome. So. <coughs> Name of the session is what? Faster does matter development with Drupal Console, and you will see why this is way, way faster. You will be able to work and create things in Drupal easily. First, let's talk about me. Well, my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me in Twitter and any other like social network as J M O L I V I S. You can also follow my tweets on Drew Podcast. This guy, this a podcast in Spanish. We we'll talk about Symphony, Laravel, Drupal, all this Symphony-related thing and web technologies. I work as a Drupal 8 Solutions Engineer for FFW. Uh, Formerly known as Link Reaction Plus, for People Plus, some other companies. So now we are FFW. And what is this thing called Drupal Console? Well, the definition is something like it's a suite of tools or a tool that you can run on your CLI to generate boilerplate code and interact with your Drupal installation. Now, if you're not aware of this, you might be thinking, but I know there's already something in Drupal, huh? It's called Rush. It's kind of similar. Same similar ideas, so I mean, so I'll show you. And uh, who maintained this project? So I, this project was started by David Flores and myself two years ago in Costa Rica. But I mean, as the project can start getting more traction and adding more features, we need more support to other developers join us, like Eduardo Garcia and Omar Aguirre. Three of us are from Mexico, the other guys that Colombia and living in Costa Rica. And who is supporting this project? I mean, the company we work for, FFW, sponsored my time for working in this, which is pretty awesome. They allow me to contribute, give back to Drupal. In that is the company where David works. It's also allowing David's time. And next is the company where Eduardo also works. The only guy living in the wild is Omar, so if you met him at some Drupal event, just make sure you invite him a beer or two. And uh, why you should care about this tool? I mean, what is this tool important in your development process? Well, Drupal 8 is more technically advanced than previous versions of Drupal. And uh, building or we'll start working with Drupal is a little more complicated or more complex, not complex. And uh, this complexity could be overwhelming sometimes. We can say this complexity is related to all the set of new features and how the Drupal is built now. It's based on components of another framework called Symphony. And we are adopting a lot of like object-oriented practices. Like you will find classes, and these classes should live in a specific directory, it should contain a definition of a namespace, it should live maybe this class should be extending another class, and you know, it's like sometimes like seems like I mean, a lot, just for building something like a form or a block, but it's totally fine. You will be seeing a lot of things like this class is extending, so it's like a lot of object-oriented I mean, concept you will see. Drupal takes, I mean, usage, heavy usage of I mean, external framework and other libraries. It also, another thing that you can find probably is like, you know, <clears throat> like uh, the plugin system. Pretty much everything now in Drupal, you extend Drupal added plugins and those plugins required to add annotations. So this like kind of things that you might think it's, I mean, too much, but it's, And how this project can help you? Well, sorry about that. Well, this tool can help you doing several things like generating code for you, getting the boilerplate code for a module. Can help you interacting with your Drupal installation. It means you can, install Drupal modules, you can list all of the services and the routes defined on the system. You can put your site in main and There's a lot of things you can do about interaction. This tool born as a, genera as a generator, and probably people still think it's only a generator, but it's no longer only a generator. It's a lot of, I mean, it's more than that. It allows you, as I mentioned, to interact with your system. And also, you can use this tool as learning 
tool for Drupal 8. And which topics we will see? We will see, I mean, I will show you how to, where to find this project, how to generate code, the required files for Drupal 8 module. I will show you how interact, how this tool can help you interact with your Drupal installation, and how you can learn Drupal by using this tool, how to write your own integration. Maybe you think this project is, is kind of useful, so you can create, you can add more commands to your own custom modules. And I will show you how to, how to make command execution, so you can help you like create this YAML file, on the, I mean, specify several commands that you can run just one line of, in your CLI to execute several commands at once. I can show you how can this tool can help you to <coughs> remotely execute commands in a, a external server or in any other site in your local server. And I will show you and invite you to contribute to this project and show you the roadmap. First, oh, yeah, awesome. <coughs> and, mm, what? Ready? What? Oh, come on. <laughs> really? <coughs> Serious? I think you have to click. The click? Oh. And it works, huh? This is a back. No, this. Should I like unplug and plug it again or? Yeah. Yeah. That would work? Should I restart right. the computer? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm thinking I should do this in Spanish because I've seen a lot of people speaking Spanish here. <laughs> well, it's fine. <laughs> okay, where do you find this project again? Well, we have a landing page that you can visit, drupalconsult.com. You will find links to documentation and the support channel as well. I'm listing here, but you can find those on the page. You can find links to the project repo, which is in GitHub. And why is in GitHub? Is because when we start this project, we receive the help and we see pull requests from people outside of the Drupal world, I mean people from the Symphony world, and we decided to put a GitHub just to make project, this project available to all the developers without a Drupal user account to help us contribute. And uh, you can find that repo on uh, the link to the repo on the, on the landing page. And we have a support channel. You are we're using Gitter, a tool for you can pair like a little chat like Slack, which is based more on using your GitHub account. And we are using a Git group for maintaining the documentation that you can also find here. There's another project on GitHub, so you can also help. How do you download this thing? It's just as easy as run a one curl command, just pass the URL, and uh, pass the URL, which is the installer, and that process will take care of downloading their one and only required file is the console.bar file. Then, as you can see here, I'm just moving the far to somewhere globally accessible on my system. I'm just assigning Drupal as an alias. You can assign anything you want. You can assign console or Drupal console, anything you want to. It's just an alias. And this is how the download process looks like. You run the curl command, throw you a lot of messages there. You don't worry about if this is like, you don't have this main warning, that's fine. And in the end, we'll show you instructions for moving. Same thing that I showed you on the previous page. And that's all you need to do. You have the whole project <coughs> package in one file. This file is executable. You move it to a one place, so globally accessible, like user local being Drupal in this case. Again, Drupal is just an alias. And you, now you can run Drupal, just type Drupal anywhere in your system, and you can get it. You can also install this using Composer, like. Composer, global required. Same thing, we'll take care of downloading the whole thing into your project. And you can also get this using the Drupal project composer template. Awesome project, I highly recommend you to take a look at. You just run composer, create project, passing the URL. I will share you the slides, so don't worry. Okay, and you can also have in this if you, by using one of those virtual machines, you have Drupal VM, which is right here and this other project in GitHub. Both projects include Drupal 8, they have a whole environment for you to work with Drupal 8, I mean, like LAMP stack, and also Drush, Drupal, Drupal Console, there's a bunch of tools, Xdebug, everything is there, ready to go, ready to work. And okay, 
How about updates? Okay, we used to constantly tagging new releases because Drupal is changing, we're adding new features, things in box. So the way to get our latest version of the project is just by running the self-update command. So based on how you install, you just run Drupal, then self-update, and you're all set. Ready to go. And, okay, the first thing you should do to in order to take advantage of this project is run the init command. Just run Drupal init, and this will take care of copying a few files in your home directory. The, fir the first one is, oh, sorry about that. That's the config jaml file. This file contains some parameters that you can override to change the behavior of the project. As you can maybe, when I run this in a multilingual, it's running in Spanish, you can do that. You just change the language for, to ES instead of EM. And also copy, copy you an example jaml file that you can run in your terminal. And this file contains several commands registering one single file. You can execute one, as I mentioned before, there's one command, the chain command, and we'll execute all of those commands that are queued in that jump file. And also, it also copies a site sample file, which is not here, but it's that file contains the configuration to take advantage of like executing in Drupal against a local site in your configuration or an external remote site. And we are using the same standard definition that Drush might be we end up using, if I am not wrong. Greg can tell us better. <coughs> Probably. Probably. Actually, it was us. Huh? Moving that way. Yeah, well, is that, we're trying to, since we're trying to do things, <laughs> share things, okay? And, uh, well, let's see how the generators looks like. As I mentioned before, you can use this tool for generate code. And you can just run generate module command. Because when you're extending Drupal, the first thing you will be doing is creating a new command. I mean, I mean, a new module. Yeah. So generate module command looks something like this. Run Drupal, run Drupal, and then the command, like in this case, the generate module, and then you see the interactive mode you just start asking your questions. Like, these questions are related to the command that you are executing. In this case, the generator that we are executing is the module. So start asking me information related to the module, like the module name, the path that I want to store this the resulting file, the machine name the project will be assigned, asking me for adding a composer JSON file definition for this module, so we can register this in packages later on. It tells me if I want to like add dependencies, other module modules, modules as dependencies, so several things based on what it's doing. And at the very end, you can see here, at the very bottom, it tells me a list, show me a list of the resulting generated or updated files. So it's all tell me, you know, you generate, you run this, and you generate all those three files. So tell me based on what I said here, here. So basically all this is taking advantage of this, the console component of Drupal, I mean, I mean console component of Symfony, sorry about that, and all the generated files are rendered via Quix. So basically this project takes the advantage of a lot of Symfony components, same as Drupal. So we take advantage of the Symfony console component and tweak and some other components. So basically it's like something like using console component to ask the questions, have this like CLI tool, and getting data based on the user input and just pass to a Quix template and render files. <coughs> What else we can do with this project? So we generate a module, now the next thing, I want to generate a page. So let's run the generate controller command. It looks something like this, same thing. Ask me for the module name. In this case, it's asking me for a module name because I will be generating something within a module. So I want to generate this controller within a module. So I specify the module name, sample. Then I get what the controller class name. So questions, again, related to the controller. You know, the, oh, Come on, yeah. ask, uh, fine. ask me the path or the, the route, the URL, this controller or this page will be I mean, located at. And some of the questions like adding like unit tests and if I want to add a service from the container, something like, I mean, you can say in this particular case, I say no, just to make it shorter. 
But if you say yes when asking me for adding services from the container and you question three years like and let me allow me to select a register service on the service container of Drupal. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm about to keep that. <laughs> and same thing, it tells you, you know, you generate those files. <laughs> really? It's getting bad. And at the very end, it told me, generate this thing. But as you can see, there's a new message here. So it's rebuilding the routing system. So it's rebuilding the routing system. So this new page gets automatically registered and the route gets revealed. So this is immediately available after running this command. So now you have a new page running in something like sample hello. And this is a placeholder. It will take in this data. Do we not see? Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, is it? Oh. Now I think. Sure. <laughs> is it too noisy? Yeah. Yeah. Are you weird? What? Yeah. What? No, sorry about that. Well, again. So we have the, you have a new page automatically registered by the system, so it's immediately available. Well, if you, if you, <laughs> if you have your module enabled, right? Install. Next thing, it generates what? Generates two files, the controller class and the router. So the router definition is here. It was, re it was rendered by the project, by the console. So you have this thing here and you have the class. And the class was created in the proper directory. All this volume plate code was added for you, which is what? The namespace definition. It tells you, since this controller is extending a controller-based class, it also takes care of importing the controller base from core and making your class extend the proper one. And also add a method for, for the, which should be the, the controller. So this is a controller class, and this is a controller action within the controller class. You can generate forms too. Configuration forms might be something you will be using a lot. So you just run, generate, form cafe. Again, several questions, like where is the, the module that will be added? You can add fields to the form generation. So basically you can specify, I want to add fields, just adding like this, fields, you can select a field type, like text field, number, all these values are, you can use arrows to switch from the different fields, I mean available types, and in the end, asking me for generating a route. If I want this form to be available to a URL, I can say yes, and same thing, class is added, in the route, it's, it's registered here. So this route, again, will be immediately available because the routing system was removed. So if the form is here, as you can see, you have a path, it's pointing to the right class, and you have the class here. So the class, again, created on the proper directory, all the boilerplate code that you want to grab, I mean, all over the time, are here, namespace, supporting classes, making my classes in the proper class, and remember, remember that I add two fields, so you can, you can find those fields here. Within the build form method, you can see the fields you added. You know, first one, or uno, and those, just two. The type that I selected, and it's also adding this little thing here. What does this mean? So this form takes, I mean this, the generation takes care of adding those fields, but it also takes care of storing the values. Because we add this submit form method, and we are getting the form from here, and we are storing the data on the configuration system. So you automatically will be able to store anything you want to have in the form. Just click save, and we'll get in this data form here. So next time you reveal the form, you have something in the configuration, we'll get it for you, and you will be able to store data automatically with this. Okay. So far, I've been showing you the interactive mode, which is like more flashy, but you can see all these little questions. But starting from this point, I'll show you the inline mode. So this tool is supposed to be to make your life easier and just type, you just type less and make, faster, make development faster, but you can use the inline mode. If you run the command like this, and then pass the options as, I mean, within the same line, and you just pass no interaction, this means they won't, this won't trigger the interactive mode. It will take the data from the options or arguments. And this looks something like this. Generate plugin block. In this case, I will generate a block. Blocks are plugin. You need to add annotations and all these uh, new things. 
Again, it tells me the file was generated, that it's a directory, revealing cache, and this is how what it was generated. The class was added, same thing, extending the proper right class, the namespaces, class in the proper directory, but it also takes care of adding the annotation keys for me. So this little block here is not a comment block, it's called back block. It's doing this, this little thing that you can see here. The annotation is the one, is the responsible for making this class discoverable by the plugin system. So this is register as a plugin block. And same thing, you can, you know, again, it's telling me this, it's sending the right class and all the boring parts. Let's generate an NTP content. As, again, I've been showing you generator that's great, render a couple of files, like three, maybe four files, which is like, nah, maybe not impressive. Let's run the generate entity content. Remember what I told you about complexity? You know, I mean, someone here knows an idea, have an idea how many files you need to create for generating an entity? 15 files and hundreds of lines of code that you don't have to type. You just run this thing. Generate entity content, say a module that I want to, the class and the thing, it's telling me I, I can register the theme here. Just copying and pasting this in my module file. But this is generated. The whole and those files are entity definition, routing definition, forms definition. So this is a, pro, a complete prop. Create, retrieve, update, delete. You can automatically just jump to your the UI and start adding either fields or start adding content. Well, I mean, I mean notes. Next. Well, we have another several numbers of generators. I don't. We don't have time to show all of them. But we have a lot of plugins now. Like. Field plugin for matter, field type widgets. We have a bunch of them. You can generate um, entity configuration, entity content, events, subscribers, services, and we're constantly adding more and more features. Okay, now let's talk about interacting with the system. As I mentioned before, this tool born as a generator, but at the point you were generating things and registering to the system. We find out that we needed to debug the system or interact, interacting with the system to make sure we are doing the things properly. Making sure when we register a service or a route, that was properly registered in the system. So we end up building things. So about interacting with your system, you, if you run site new, guess what? you can download Drupal. You can select from this long list the version, or you just can use something like Drupal, let me sign you, Drupal, and specify the version here as an argument, and this will take care of downloading Drupal for you. Uh, installing Drupal, yes, we have it here. Site install, and I started asking these questions. We are working on having interactive, I mean, avoiding the interactive mode here, passing inline values as drop, like DB, URI, I mean, options like <coughs> the credentials and all that, just avoid passing for this, I mean, but this is the, the first version of the site install. You can try it and never use root as your user or password. <laughs> Container debug. So we start adding services and we need to make sure the services get registered on the container. So we have this container debug command. So you can list the, all of the services living inside the Drupal container. As you can see, is the, I mean the, the service name here and the definition, which class is pointing to this specific service. Same thing for routes. We have route, router debug. We have the route name and the route path. But if you pass this value as an argument, you can see the whole definition of the route. You say something like the router debug and then the route name. You can see the path, the controller. You can see all of the options within the JAML file definition here. And how about side mode? Well, Doing the session in, in, in DrupalCon Bogota, after session, I mean, one, one of the little bots approached me and told me, you know, we have a distrust command, which is like pretty nice. You can turn on and off. I mean, you can put this site in like develop or production mode, like turning on cache, you know? So we decided to build this. So running site mode and then changing dev or prod, turn on all these options in your computer, in the configuration system, like, like CPing, like, or like compressing and minifying JS and CSS. So, and it also allows you to show the query and views, it'll show your like, performance. I mean, if you have the proper rights on the services YAML file, it also takes care of enabling and disabling tweak debug. 
Well, other commands of the site namespace is site maintenance, so you can turn on and off your site in uh, maintenance mode, and you can run site status. You can see the status of your site, you know, the database connection data, which is the version that you Drupal that you have, and like the reports, report status on the, on, on, on the UI or the site status command, you know, from Josh. And we also have some commands to interact with configuration, like config debug, it's pretty much listing the configuration, config edit, you can edit, I mean, a specific configuration object, export, import, Exporting a view, so if you say export view, then the whole definition of the view will be exported. You can export a content type, so the, the content type and all of the related things to the content are exported to you, like fields and all. I mean, fields and views and anything related to the content is get exported. Same thing for view, it's like building this little like, feature of, of configurations. Now, we have the importing single or import the whole, I mean, the whole configuration tar file, and you can go config override and change in a specific key object. Values. And related to the user, you can interact with user, like something like user, login, clear attempts. You can clear the attempts for, for, I mean, when user tries to log in, it gets locked. You can get a user URL, password hash, and password reset. Okay, let's talk about learning Drupal 8. And then this thing, I will, I will asking you for helping me once I finish with this section. And when you pass the dash slash learning option, like this, I'm getting a controller and saying dash slash learning, no interaction because I don't want to the interactive thing jump. Guess what? We generate code, but also generate this little block here in the top, which is commented, like like commented. And if this is telling you what this is, you know, this is what a route means, you know? In order to create a route, you need a page, you need a route, this and that. So this is the only place where this option is available at this point. We want to make this thing like even better. And since the tool is multilingual, these messages can like show in the language that you have, I mean, set on your configuration file. So we can use this tool for make people, I mean, learn Drupal 8 way, way faster and make easy, their life easy. So my question here is, I would, I mean, ask you to try the tool, and try the generators and let us know where, I mean, which places will be great to having this tool I mean, available. It's a matter of getting some, I mean, adding a key on the configuration YAML, like language file, and this will be rendered. And actually, I was talking the other day with the examples module maintainer. So maybe we can work together in having this definition. It might be in a separate project, and we can share with the examples and console, or might be adding a Drupal generated examples and generate the whole thing from there in any language that you want to learn. Try Drupal. And how about greater integration? Maybe I saw this thing well, and you like it, and you want to try it, and you, want, you have a module and want to write a command. We provide you with a command to generate commands. <laughs> so made them. Yeah, it's like, you want to make your life easy. Generate command, passing the options, and the command class is generated within your module. So you can write an integration with your modules. There's one module already, which is Web Profiler. This module already contains an integration. This is an awesome project from the Symfony world, the Web Profiler component. And this little toolbar here, it tells you a lot of data from the HTTP life cycle, but I won't bother you with the concept. Basically, everything happening from the request, initial request and the final response is recorded here. So you can see a lot of data. But this data is a story somewhere <laughs> You can see in this place, you can see the latest one. You can use the UI for like, you know, listing and searching for a previous one. But is it better the CLI? You just run, you can, this thing, you can run several things like benchmark. Web profile is benchmark. This hit your site several times. Many times, it, as many times as you use the site here. And in the end, give you a result. Like, you know, the average time you're loading your site is this and that. But this data also, this data is recorded on the system. And you can web profiler list to see all of your requests as an ID and the title of the, of the definition. And if you pass the ID, you can see the whole definition of that specific log request. You can also do the same for the logs, I mean, the, the logs in, in your Drupal system. You can db log, debug, and you can see all of the, I mean, the recorded logs that we listed from the CLI. Okay, remember I told you about I mean, automate command execution, this JAML thing? Well, the command is called chain. Makes sense, right? So we can change different, several commands at once. 
just by calling file and the path to a specific JAML. We decided to use JAML in our doc chain, but we don't want to introduce a Drupal listen or a Drupal console listen. I don't know how you say <laughs> We want to use something that is a standard, which is JAML, we're already using it. So you just have something like this. We already provide you with example. So if you run in, this will be copied to your system. It's basically an array that this guy can help me fix. Thank you. Basically, it's an array of commands. You can you specify here the options, like you know, the module name, the path. The same thing we specified either on the interactive or I mean with the questions or inline are here, options and arguments. If we define it here, if we run this, guess what? All these commands will run just executing one line in your CLI. You can pro probably call this project start and having your home like, definition there, like I want this module, I want two controllers, I want a couple of services, I want a form. You set it up there and just run one line, everything is generated up once. And we're thinking probably provide a place where people can share their own like recipes so you can, you know, I want this and you know, write this and you know, this helps me a lot so you can probably share it with the community so we can all take advantage of what you are doing so we can like build this, I mean, take advantage of this. How about remote command execution? Okay. I have it. And you can run Drupal site debug since I run the init command in this place, a new JAML file, something on file is copied, so I can run Drupal site debug. This will list. Oh, sorry, it's not here. This will list the, all of the site's definition. Like it will tell me you have something like sample that local, sample that like remote, or sample that dev or prod. And if you pass the name of your site, it will show you the definition. Like where is the site? Where is the IP of the site? Or maybe it's local. He tell, I mean, he tells you like, mm, you know, the path from where your public SSH key is stored in your system. So you use that key, so you don't have to enter your user and password. You, the path for a file where your pass phrase, I mean, key is there in order to like, like I mean, encrypt your, I mean, the, the login too. So you have here, site debug, site, and if you run, target Drupal and then you target and then the site name you can run one command in any site with this and it will look like this site the, side the box again this is your site site the box and then the site name this is the feature here you know remember what I told you the S, your key the path the path of where your site is stored in the site the host the, the IP if it's remote or no this is deprecated no longer valid and if you run target plus the site, in this case, you can execute a command to a remote site or any other local site that you have in your system. It doesn't have to be remote. And maybe one day we can have I mean, you can have that one in your like VPS and maybe companies like Pantheon or Akio or some other companies can have this. I mean it just depends. We use it around. Tips. I'll talk about some tips for taking advantage of this project. First. The number one, you can, I know I show you about the sites thing, you can remote, but if you don't want to bother with the train all configuration, you can use like root and pass a valid path to a Drupal site and run Drupal console from any place. You don't have to run Drupal console within a site. You can just pass root, pass it the path, and this command will be executed on the site that you are calling. This was called Drupal before, but we renamed it to root in order to make this like a, Mm, make this uh, same as the alias definition that we are using. Tip number two, and what I told you about multilingual is the learning thing. If you open your config file and change this to another language like Spanish, French, if we have more now, this looks like something like this. You know, the whole interface is changed to, in this case, in Espanol, you know? Because there's like 10 people speaking Spanish here. But you can, I mean, you can, I mean, just copy the file, the comp copy the languages file, and just make your, I mean, change the labels, and boom, is there. Something that I didn't told you about gradient integration, when you create your own command, 
gets automatically registered and discovered by the system. You don't have to do nothing other than adding the command class in your module, and Drupal console will find that command automatically. And remember I told you about learning? So learning thing is also in Spanish. In this case, the whole, I mean, the whole description is also in the language that you are running your project. Tip number three, you can use default values. If there is a value for an option that you, you don't want to enter every single time, you can add this in your config file. Default commands, generate controller, which is the command, option. So if I say option module, next time that I run anything in the system, any command that needs this option, automatically will set this value and won't ask me the value again. <laughs> Disable contributed commands. The other day, we changed something. You know, every time we change things, other things get broken. And the modules containing commands were broken. And now I find out at some point we we'll, might need something like this. So we add this, this I mean available, I mean this functionality feature, you can disable contribute commands. If you specify in this key disable modules and you pass the module name, the modules, the commands registered in this module won't be, I mean the commands added in these modules won't be registered on the console. So won't be available. So if one of those are broken and it's breaking your installation, I mean your console project, I mean your the console in your local installation, you disable it here and won't be loaded, won't be broken in it. But the, I mean before fixing, doing this, I fix those projects, send a pull request, and now everything is working fine. Common aliases. So by default, Symphony console component provide you with aliases, but we are Try, I mean, excusing about adding all those aliases because it's easier to type CR than contribute. I mean, we all agree on that. Three versus that, better. Not that better, better. So we are doing, uh, working on this. Uh, thing is, we start adding aliases and say, well, we don't want to sound too opinionated in here. So let's, we'll add a new issue and open a discussion to kind of decide the best name for aliases. And well, you will be able to add aliases as well in your own local system based on the configuration file. But it's not listed here, but you will. You can use help option, right? You know, you have no idea what this command is doing. You can do something like command and then dash the help. And the help thing will be like, you know, telling you the options, you know, the little label, label for the option. It's telling you like the aliases. Those aliases are provided by, by component itself. And we are working to adding another piece of code here, like examples, so we'll be, we'll be providing you with some examples how you can use this command. And, I mean, we're open to add more stuff here, I mean, anything that is useful, just ping me, open an issue, generate inline, remember what I told you about inline, I mean, this? Might be you want to run a command in an inline mode, but you don't have no idea which options, so we provide you with a dash dash generate inline, which is this. You run a command, dash dash generate inline. You run the command as usual, but in the end, it tells you the inline representation. So you don't have to be guessing. Just run it once, copy this, and next time, you need to execute the command, just this, not this. Yeah, it's good. Same thing for chain. I mean, I told you about you can chain commands, but maybe you don't know how to do that. Well, use dash dash. Uh, generate chain, run the command, and this is, out this is the output. So you can copy this, put it into a jungle file, and you are ready to go to have all these commands executed at once. Number nine, generate documentation. Maybe you generate a command, and we provide you with this, generate doc. So this provides you with a mark, mark, mark that output of your command. I mean, command name and options, how to run it, the available options written on the command, and the arguments. You can copy this and paste in a, in a file, in a markdown file, you're all set. Your documentation for your command is here. Actually, I wrote a command to ren for rendering the documentation of this project. Because I'm lazy. Number 10, you can use, how do you pronounce this thing? Peco, Peco, Pico. I have no idea how to pronounce this. This is a, like, interactive filter. If you run something like this, it will send something like magic. Remember what I, when I show you the router debug and container debug, like so messy? This is, if you run this, this happens. So this is like, 
like then like dynamically you can filter, query the thing, you can use errors for selecting something. It's pretty nice. I highly recommend you to take a look at. Actually, I didn't even find it myself. I saw someone tweeting like, you know, using console and Pecos is really awesome. And I was like, I mean, oh, what's this Pecos? Pecos is awesome. Console is not. <laughs> <laughs> Might be you are like, oh, I want you to contribute. How do I do that? Basically, three things. First, for clone project, for in your local machine, to run compulsory install. That's all you need to do in order to have this project in your local environment. Again, go to this link, for into your GitHub user, clone it, and you run the culture. <laughs> and this will take care of by downloading all the third party dependencies. Okay, before you send us a pull request, you want to let you know something. Since Drupal console is not a mod Drupal module, it's a Symfony application, we are following PSR2 coding standards are listed here. You take a look at this. But don't worry, the generated code is following Drupal coding standards. So, but the code within the the, the component, the project is PSR2, so might be look a little different than the code you are used to do, but don't worry, because I'll show you in the next one. Well, we are using this tool for analyze our code. We are not at this level at this time, you know, we are probably being a little lazy and our code is having some issues, so we have, we have this tool for analyzing our code. This tool tells you a mean, better an overview of how your code is, what you're missing, if you are might be using a, a bar, declaring a variable and not using it, passing an argument and not using it, something like that. This tool gives you a really nice overview report of your quality of your code. So we are using this tool in order to make our code like way, way better. And we are using we are using Travis to run our I mean our run our test when people send pull requests. Remember what I told you about PSR2 and thing and that might be like a little overwhelming at the beginning. Well, I end up building this thing. So this tool, PHP QA, includes several PHP QA quality insurance like tools. So running this thing, actually this project was inside console, but at some point I was like, yeah, I can probably take this out. Someone who can take advantage of it. There's a new project to maintain. Yeah, good. Sounds good. And you can get it like this. Running this project, well, you get it by by cloning this. I still have an issue to packaging this as far because when building far, there's some issue with symlinks and I haven't fixed that. So, so at this point, you need to git clone this. Sorry about that. And you can just change to your project and run PHP QI analyze and then pass dash type dash dash files and then the path of your of your project. Oh, this project is also built in Symfony console. And if you don't want to run this every single time, you can add a pre-commit git hook. Just copy and paste this code. And the next time you do a git commit, before doing the commit, it will run this tool for you. And if there's something broken, like, a, like a, it, it runs a lint, you know, PHP unit, like analyze your code, PSR standard. If there's something broken, it will tell you where it's broken. If there's a PSR2 standard, it will fix it for you. And well, this is the people contributing to the project. So I want to thank everyone here. A couple of those guys are here, so thank you. And this is not the latest, the most updated one. So I promise I'll change this one and upload when I'm upload the, when uploading the slides. And this is like the whole thing. And we need help. And it helped to me in like several different ways. Like, you know, might be you think, oh, I don't know, Symphony and might be sending pull requests is way too much for now. That's fine. You can help with the documentation. Of the issue, just by trying and helping us spreading the word. I'm spreading the word. I mean, you know, I get, I go to bed camp and I saw this crazy guy speaking about something like, yeah, just talk about it. If you try it, if you like it or not, hate it, let us know. And you we have I have swag, I have stickers, if you want stickers, pick me by the end, at the end, I have Stickers here, showing your sticker in your computer, like you know, probably like oh, you know, it's a way of spreading the word. Okay, and well, you can tweet about at Drupal console or Drupal console hashtag. Let's talk about the roadmap. I told you what we just did. I will tell you what we have planned. Okay, we have plans for increasing the code coverage because we are doing bad in that area. We know. Yeah, we're we're getting better at that point. So we are adding tests for the classes, and I mean, as an excuse, I can say, 
you know, at the beginning, we just want to add features to make something show, but it's just excuses. We need to practice, we know. We are working in provide multi-site multi -site support. So we're working on this thing. And uh, something like this, like an ongoing task, improving documentation, you know, improve the, the verbose or the dash slash learning output. And well, dummy content generation is something that we were thinking about to do. I mean, I know there's some projects outside taking care of this, so <laughs> maybe those commands will be end up on those modules instead of triple console, which is that probably the best thing to do. And I was I was talking this morning with one of the maintainers of, of workflow and stuff. And yeah, it seems like maybe this can happen. Okay, we have milestones. If you go to GitHub, which is like Edge and Drupal slash <laughs> Drupal console. You can see the milestones, so you can see what we are working at for the next release. So I'm planning to tag a new release, maybe tomorrow. And I'm planning to do a sprint tomorrow, if I do the sprint. Maybe I'll tag into that for like Monday or Tuesday. And probably you can just provide me help with a pull request. That would be great. And you will show up on the, your avatar will show up on the next time that I talk about this. You can see what's coming. Okay, upcoming implementations, where Working to made attack module is adding is working or adding commands. Same for rules. In my video, module could be here. I mean, module, you want to add integration? Let us know. It's just, it's just like generate command. And maybe you were thinking, hey, this this thing looks like drush, drush. Like I mean, yeah, it is China. But let's work together, as Greg said. And Let's work together to make awesome tools together. I miss say Greg Anderson here, this quote. It's not mine, it's Greg's. We have something. <laughs> I, I, will, uh, I attend to a meetup in San Diego like probably one month before Drupal Town Los Angeles. And I spent two days working with Greg. We graduate integration is here. This is a pretty awesome pull request number, the best number ever. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this, there's still a lot of work to do, and we are working to it, don't worry, we are working, to, we are making this thing happen. So this is here, jump into it, take a look, add a comment, I mean, let us know what you think about. So this will allow you to run Drush, and all of the Drupal console commands will be available within Drush if this happens. One more thing before you go. Well, what, you know, we know not, all, not everyone feels happy with the CLI. So maybe you want to run something faster and you don't want to download this thing. Maybe it's easier to open your browser and go to DrupalGenerator.com. You know, like this. And they start typing, clicking, you know, like we are used to do with UI browser. And this will generate, the MVP will be like generating the JAML chain file for you, but the, the 1.0 release will provide you with a downloadable file, like a tar file of a module. So you will be able to get here, <coughs> generate the module, click, 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 type, 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 generate a controller, click, click, enter names here, generate another controller, generate a service, it might be a content type, a couple of forms, adding fields, then click generate here, and you will be provided with a downloadable tar file, which is containing a module with all of the components that you tell this thing to render from the little site. Actually, you can get into here, like try. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no generation happening now. It all, only tells you what's the command they're trying to run. There's only for generate modules, and this is another project. For, I mean, if you are good with, I mean, if you like like front end frameworks and React JS and, and you know, and you can help us with this. And I think that's all I have. So I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for staying. And feel free to stop me, ping me during this weekend, during the event, or in Twitter, I mean Drupal console or J M O I V S. And please join us sprinting in this thing tomorrow at the sprint place, I don't know what the sprint place is, but we'll be there sprinting, just making this thing better for you know what I mean? And also, I mean, again, as I mentioned, you know what I mean, it's not, you can help in different ways, just by trying and letting, letting us know, it, it helps a lot, you know, by opening an issue and a pull request, maybe it's a feature that you want to, like, add, I think it will be, uh, be useful, just, I mean, let us know, feel free to open an issue. And again, I have stickers, 
So stickers are here, and again, thank you for coming.